In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Cross Bailey. So let's jump straight to the end with my thoughts on this pen. This is a pen that I have fallen in and out of love with a number of times. It's the first fountain pen that I used as an adult, and I used it for two years straight. And then I discovered other pens, which is when I fell out of love with this pen, more to the point that I almost really hated this pen. And then I found a converter for it because I was only using the cartridge blue-black inks. And when I got a converter and could start using a bunch of different inks, then I came back into love with this pen because while it's a little slicker than I prefer, it has a fantastic writing experience for being really a very inexpensive pen. In the end, I'm really very happy that this was the pen that brought me back to fountain pens because it gave me the way in at an affordable price, and it really was giving me a very nice writing experience, even though I didn't have enough experience with pens to know how good of an experience it was really giving. So even at this point, I'm back in love with this pen. I enjoy using it a lot. Now that we know how I feel about the Cross Bailey, let's see how I got to that opinion, starting with the unboxing. The Cross Bailey came in a burst pack, which I no longer have, but its packaging was underwhelming. The packaging it came in was perfect for keeping its price down. I don't know that this is the type of pen that you worry about having it stored in a box. It's been stored in a bag with other pens and its finish is strong enough that it's never been marred up. So the fact that the packaging was very inexpensive didn't bother me. With the pen out of the box, we need to get to the nib. Now, as long as it doesn't take 20 turns to uncap a pen, I generally don't care. So how many turns does it take to uncap this pen? The Cross Bailey is a pull cap. Being a snap cap and being the pen that brought me back to fountain pens, this really was a perfect introduction back into that world for me because I don't know at that point that I would have really been ready for screw caps. I might have found it a bit inconvenient. So I've come to believe that snap caps very frequently for a new user might be a better option. This gets us to the nib. This pen has a steel medium nib. Looking at the pictures of the nib, you see it's rather busy and the scroll work itself isn't like it's fancy, but coming back, it did look very fancy and it was my fancy pen for that reason. The biggest thing about it is going to be that it's a medium nib, which I wasn't happy with at the time when I was falling out of love with it. It was thicker than I preferred. Now, let's ink this pen up. The Cross Bailey is a proprietary cartridge or converter which holds approximately 0.8 milliliters of ink. The ink for today is Sailor Studio 670. I didn't realize it when I got the pen that it does take a converter, but it is a proprietary converter, which I'm very happy with. I've used a lot of different inks in this pen, and proprietary converters for me have never failed. I've never had to throw a proprietary converter out. So for this pen, there is a second converter just sitting in a box, probably never to be used because the converter's very good. As a habit, I don't normally post my pens, but some pens need to be posted to be used comfortably, and some people prefer to post their pens. 
Technically, you can post this pen. It does fit there. It does not fit very tight or secure. It would wiggle around, so probably not a need to do it. The few times I did try to use this posted, I had the cap wiggling around on the end because of where it's sitting on my hand. So I would use this unposted unless you have to post a pen. This might not be the right one for you. If you enjoy videos like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, the important part, the writing sample. As I stated, the writing experience is exceptionally smooth for being such an inexpensive pen. I would never expect a pen that you really just pick up in, you know, your big box retailers to write this smooth out of the box. And it does. It doesn't let down in any way. I find the writing experience from this pen to be as pleasant as it is from many pens that are much more money. This is really their, I'm going to call it throwaway level in that it's inexpensive. They don't put a lot of effort into this and it kind of does show. However, regardless of the amount of effort that they give, the nib itself in its writing is super smooth. It's smooth when writing on toothier papers, which shows me the pen is fairly wet in its adjustment. Now, for if you're starting out and you're using cheaper paper, that can be a problem because you have a wet medium that then looks like a broad or sometimes double broad, but it's even smooth on toothier papers. So it's a very pleasant writing experience. It's comfortable in the hand, and I did use it for two years, so maybe it's very comfortable in my hand for that reason. Now for something a bit more standard in comparing writing size. I use Namiki Blue to do this. Now here it is with a Yovo Extra Fine on the left, medium in the middle, and a 1.1 stub on the right. In the writing, I find that this medium does write as a true medium, which I've come to enjoy much more as I've tried a lot of pens. So. I do wish it, that I had found it in a fine because I think at the time I would have been even happier with it. And I wouldn't mind trying their fine. If I could find it in a fine, I might be willing to pick that up. But how does this one compare to other nibs I've used? Looking at the writing of a cross bailey with a medium nib, here it is next to a Pelican M1000 with a fine nib. A Lamy 2000 with a medium nib. A Fountain Pen Revolution Japer with their broad nib. A Duke 209 writing very upright with a Fude nib. And a Nimesine Fission with a broad nib.
So it isn't a review without some size comparisons. Here it is capped, here it is uncapped, and here it is posted. Its size is fairly normal, very average as a fountain pen. You can't really post it, so if it's not long enough for you, it's gonna be a problem. But if it is long enough to use, then it's perfectly good. The only thing I've noticed is the tapered section can be a little narrow, so I hold it farther back in the bulbed area of the body. At this point, we have a dirty pen that we need to clean. Be sure to check out the next pen review when we take a look at the Conklin Word Gauge. If you want to be able to support not just my channel, but any reviewer, then when you make a purchase, be sure to tell that retailer where you heard about it. Thanks for watching.